to yet another exciting music class today with Miss Telemaris. I'll always be here to make music fun and interesting for you. Today we are going to be looking at the topic, the teen whistle. We'll be looking at what? The teen whistle. The teen whistle is a musical instrument that plays musical sound. So we are going to be looking at what the teen whistle is the parts of tea whistle and as well the fingers or how the tea whistle can be played. Okay, the penny whistle is a simple six hole woodwind instrument that is commonly known as the tin whistle. Did you get that clearly? I said the penny whistle is a simple six hole woodwind instrument that is commonly known as the tin whistle. This is to say that the penny whistle belongs to the woodwind instrument. You might wonder what is a woodwind instrument. We have the wind family that is split into two branches and we have it as the woodwind and the brass. The brass instruments are instruments that are all made by metal but why the woodwind instruments are instruments that are both made of metal and wood. Now, the woodwind instrument, the kind of sound that it has is not as loud as the brass. The brass instruments are very loud. That's where you have the trumpet. And here in the woodwind instrument, you have the tin whistle. The penny whistle is commonly known as the tin whistle. So either name can pass for each other. The penny whistle consists of the fipo or mouthpiece, which is plastic. This is to say that the penny whistle, we have the top part of the tin whistle that is made up of plastic and that top part is not called the head. It is called the mouthpiece or you can say it is the fipo. Can you see the way it is in this picture? You can see the mouthpiece that is having this black head up. That is what is called what? The mouth piece. We also have the metal part of the tin whistle that is called the pipe body or barrel. That's what we call it. You can either call it the pipe body or you can call it the barrel. It is metal like and it has six holes respectively. So the tin whistle is made up of the mouth piece. It has the barrel and it has what? six holes can you see these tea whistles they're looking so 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 beautiful here tea whistles are made of different keys like here we can have the key of f the key of g the key of c the key of d they have different patterns and they have different colors they can be silver they can be red they can be blue whatever color you want to desire you get it from the tea whistles the tea whistle is played with little air in order to get the low key. Why? The air increases as the key climbs up the octave. What do we mean here? When you want to um, play the, you are going to put in little air. But when you want to play the, you can't put the same pressure of air in both. So to get low keys, you don't need to make the air so much else you'll be having escape of air and it will be giving you wrong sounds. Now, the holes are covered with the flesh of your fingers in order to sound different pitches. You don't pinch the holes. You must flesh your fingers across the holes and fill the holes to make sure they are properly covered. How do we apply the hands? The left hand stays on top of the tin whistle close to the mouthpiece. So we are having six holes. The first three holes that are on top, your left hand holds that part. And you make use of fingers two, three, four to cover the holes if you want to apply sound. Did you get that? So your left hand is always on top of the tin whistle close to the mouthpiece. Why the right hand stays at the bottom of the tea whistle? 
using fingers 2, 3, and 4 to cover the last or bottom three holes respectively. Like I said, the left hand holds the top, the right hand holds the bottom. And we make use of three fingers each from both hands. Those are fingers 2, 3, and 4. So fingers 2, finger 2 cover the first hole, finger 3, second hole, finger 4, third hole. Then the right hand will come finger 2, fourth hole, finger um, 2, finger 3, sorry, fifth hole, and finger 4 we cover the sixth hole. Can you see this T whistle? This T whistle is on the key of F and is played in ascending or descending order. This is to get an octave complete. When we say ascending and descending order, when you climb down the stairs, you will climb it up. If you climb it up, you climb it down. So when you climb down the stairs, it means you once climbed up. So when you want to sing or play your sofa note, you must go in ascending and return back in descending order. So you have it as do re mi fa so la ti do ti la so fa mi re do. I hope you got that. Now look at the parts. I want us to see it very clearly. We have the mouthpiece and we have the people. They are both in the mouthpiece. Then we have the barrel. Remember I said you can call it the barrel or you can call it the pipe body. We have how many holes there? One, two, three, four, five. And they are lettered. From the bottom, we have D, E, F, G, A, B. Then you have fingers one, two, three, four, five, and six. The major truth is this three whistle comprises of three parts. The mouthpiece, the body, and the holes. Now let's look at the fingering chart. We are going to be looking at the key of F major. Remember we said this time around we are going to be learning with the key of F. That's what our own T whistle that I am holding here is made up of. Now we have F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. I know you, have, you can see the last one which is F there. But F is a repetition of the first F. Sorry, the second F is a repetition of the first F. This is just to show us how you are to play the T whistle. The one that is shaded shows that the note is covered. But the one that is unshaded shows that the note is uncovered. We have at the bottom, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Then we have F, G, A, B, flat, C, D, E, F. So to get do, you are going to cover the six holes of your T whistle. So if you have your T whistle there, can you pick it up? And try to fix your six fingers on the six holes. I'm doing mine own here. So to get do, hear the sound. Then to get re, with your six fingers still positioned on the T whistle, Remove the first finger from the bottom. So you are going to raise it by opening the hole. So get me, you take two fingers away. To so get far, you add another finger by opening it. To so get so, you take another finger away, meaning you are going to be closing just the first two holes from the top. To get la, you open five bottom holes and you close the first hole at the top. Then to get T, you are going to open all the holes. None of the holes will be covered. Yeah. And finally, to get the high dough, you will close all six fingers, but open the first hole. That is on top, closer to where the mouthpiece. Let's go. So I want to run this scale. Just listen. Good. 
good. You can see, I'm sure you heard that I round the scale in ascending by going up and descending order. It is not so difficult. Immediately you see the fingering chart. Just look at it clearly. And once you get your tea whistle, you'll be good to play in it. Wow. And here is where we'll be concluding for today. Don't forget to be the first to attempt your quiz and get your assignment done. Remember, we said all for today's class is to know what the tea whistle is, the part of the tea whistle, and how you can apply your fingers. Like I said, the left hand stays on top, fingers two, three, and four from both hands are used to cover the holes and you must cover them appropriately so there will not be escape of air. The tea whistle belongs to the woodwind instrument and you can call it the mouthpiece or the people or you call it the barrel or the pipe body. Stay good.